Hello and welcome to this week's Money Mill Insights. My name is Stephen and I am the Marketing Manager here at Techstone. Question, what is one of the simplest ways you can take any memorial and make it more elegant? Answer, add shape carving. Shape carving is such a simple process that can make any stone more beautiful and it's actually just a very nominal upcharge for the family. Now fortunately, we have on our staff a Mr. George Zuko. George is a master craftsman and carver and he's been doing this since he was 18 years old, which was 45 years ago. He is a consummate professional, our expert on staff. I was able to sit down with George and ask him some questions to help you better understand shape carving to help you sell to your families, as well as if anybody in your company is perhaps an aspiring shape carver themselves, George gives five tips on what he sees as benefits to help them with their craft. I hope you enjoy. We do double process shape carving um, and I prefer that personally. I think it's a nicer look, uh, but you know what? Uh, not everyone's the same. Some people uh, do like the single process shape carving. I didn't come up, I was, I was trained in the double process way and that's what I think is the right way. And some of the major companies, especially I think up in Vermont or out west, uh, do it the double process way. And that's... So the big companies do it double processed and... Well, um, so there's some of the bigger, there's big companies also in Georgia, but they usually single process. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just prefer, uh, personally, I think it's a nicer look. A lot of granites are different. Uh, for instance, we were just talking about Georgia. Uh, it's one of the nicest ones to carve. It carves very smooth. It's uh, um, it's a little bit softer granite, but it carves real nice. Uh, so does Barry. There's a lot of nice granites. Even some of the Indian granites, uh, Bahama Blue, carves smoothly. Uh, even um, there's just you know, and there's some that are a little rougher. You know, uh, the beautiful granites, but maybe more quartz is inside of it and it's a, a rougher texture. Sometimes you can take your chisel and uh, chisel your leaves smoother, maybe the bulb on your rose and some things like that it can be smoothed out with your chisels or dremels. So, uh, and we sometimes will employ those techniques if it's a rough granite. So you'd say that like the Georgia is the easiest one for smoothness and contours? It is beautiful it carves beautifully as I was doing on the on the flat marker uh, I sunk it here and here and then came up and then I sunk it at the end of the leaf so it gives it a uh, you have the nice shape and it's not too much instead of shaping instead of not doing that a lot of guys and I did this when I first started I shape it here and then I shape it here and it made it just a little bit too busy is there a color of granite that you think looks the prettiest? You know, I, I always thought Barry had a, a real nice look, uh, especially an all axed Barry dye or something like that. It's bright white. It just has a beautiful look. Uh, I know it's, it's pretty plain when you, you're talking about colors, uh, but it, it has a very nice look to it. But as far as some of the other colors, I think, um, Bahama blue that just sort of sticks out in my mind it's a beautiful granite it is uh, an Indian granite but um, it, normally it's readily available so it's not a problem I really do like Canadian pink or what was called Laurentian rose that's a beautiful granite too it comes out of Canada it's uh, carves very smooth also and just is a classy stone it's beautiful Well, I think one of the biggest, most important things in shape carving is is feathering. So, if you you want to take a, if you want to do a bowl shape, you just don't want to you know sandblast straight down and create a pit. And it's so easy to do that, but you want to start out there, but always keeping that nozzle moving. 
and then feathering it up and then concentrate more where you want it the deepest, but you want it to be feathered. You don't want a, you know, a, a pit. You know, it's just ugly. I think nozzles, having the correct nozzle is, and the right nozzle, you know, sometimes you'll have a brand new nozzle and use it on a rose or something, but uh, sometimes when those nozzles wear out or the, the nozzle opening gets larger, that's beneficial for you on a different for a different application. It's a different tool. It's a different tool and you don't, we never throw them away until they break or they're, they're just, the, the opening's too big to be useful. The taper of the nozzle is, uh, it's, you can get that nozzle in. So if you're shaping a rose or a calla lily or something like that, and you want to get down there and you maybe have to get underneath something, it will fit. Uh, it's better than a, a cone shape, in my view. I know some, I know a guy that really loves the cone shape, uh, but I like the, the more, uh, it's narrower. So it, it just seems to work better. You feel like, you have a pencil in your hand or something when you're using that instead of a, you know, a big heavy tool. My favorite abrasives to use is uh, Australian Garnet. Uh, it's a, well, as a matter of fact, I haven't used a new bag of Garnet for a while because uh, I just reuse it over and over. And I have quite a bit on uh, in my room, so I just scoop it up. I, I do screen it and get out any uh, pieces of stencil or whatever happened to sometimes a piece of granite or whatever. Uh, I screen it and I reuse it over and over. And it's pretty fine now, but it, it cuts well. Um, you can see by the shape carving on that primrose or the wildflower that, uh, that it cuts. And that's been used many, many times. So uh, it seems to, you get your money's worth and it's, uh, it's a good product. If we have um, emblems that need sandblasted that have finer lettering in them, sometimes they're just little army emblems or something like that. They're, it's just a nice granite to use or a nice abrasive to use. One of the other things I like to use is a uh, airline uh, for a sandblast hose. And that's what I have on my pot now is it's a regular airline, a blow-off line, uh, and I use that as a sandblast hose, and it's actually lasted longer than uh, some of the sandblast hoses I've used, and it's so flexible that you, it, you're not wearing out your wrist, you're not getting tired, you're, and you can move it to where you want it. Uh, I would I recommend them, I do, and there's gonna be sandblast hose people that aren't gonna like me for that, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to use, it's very flexible, and frankly, I've had one blowout and I've had that hose on there for two years. I know some of you guys out there, you're using a, a cloth hood or something like that. It's not healthy, it's good to have an air supplied helmet. And um, one of the nice things, uh, on a hot day like today, it's 90, 90 some degrees today, and we're in that room, and I've got a jacket on, but my helmet was air conditioned. And it's a nice thing to have on a hot day. You can stay in it, you can continue, and you actually feel cool with a little gadget from uh, a yeah, cooling tube. A cooling tube. And in the winter, you can reverse it, and it will send out cool air and put warm air into your helmet. They're a nice uh, addition to the comfort level of your job. My name is George Zucco. I've been in the monument business for 45 years. I've been shaping probably 43 of those years. And uh, I would say I'm a little better than when I started. <laughs> and I look forward to uh, working on your stone, working on your family's stone. So I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. I, I just enjoy it. It's what I do. 